Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Robert Mamada. Uh, I'm one of the instructors of Mass 144. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about topic three, which is about simple and compound interest. So uh, let me share the screen. And OK, here's my PowerPoint. OK, let me and get into the full screen. Okay, here it is. Okay, so this is the topic I wanna to talk about today. And there are two topics, simple interest and compound interest. So when you leave your money in the saving account, you're gonna get the additional money called interest. Uh, lately, the interest rate is very low, so you may not get much money, but you do get some interest after let's say one year or two years. Or uh, the other example is uh, when you use your credit card and if you don't pay the full amount by the due date, then you're gonna be charged interest and the credit card companies call it annual percentage rate. And that, that's very high, like 20%, right? And so as I said, there are two kinds of interest, simple interest and compound interest. And I'm gonna talk about the difference later. So first, uh, I discuss the simple interest. So here's a definition from the textbook. And simple interest is paid strictly as a percentage of original amount of money. So here's an example. Uh, suppose you leave $1,000 uh, in your bank saving account. So uh, let's also suppose that the annual interest rate is 1%. Now, the amount of interest is you know, 1% times $1,000. So note, note that 1% is 0 0.01. So you're gonna multiply 1,000 and 0 0.01, uh, which is $10. So uh, a year later, you're gonna have $1,010 in your saving account. So in your example, uh, the $1,000 you left in the saving account is called the principal, and this 1% is called the interest rate, the annual interest rate. So here's a formula that, uh, uh, that I use. So, <coughs> excuse me, uh, A denotes the amount after one year. Then A is equal to principal times parenthesis one plus R. So remember, uh, I had one plus R, which is like one plus 0 0.01. So in your example, I had 1.01. <coughs> Now, uh, so the question is, what's gonna happen if you leave your money in the saving account beyond one year? Then uh, at the time, we need to consider compound interest. So here's a definition of uh, compound interest from the textbook. So compound interest is a percentage of an original amount as well as percentage of the new amount, including previously calculated interest. So uh, as before, let's say the principal is $1,000 and the annual, annual interest rate is 1%. So uh, this time uh, you're gonna leave your money in your saving account for three years. So here's our notations. A1, or formally it's called A sub one because one is, a, one is in the small letter. So that's the total amount uh, at the end of the first year. So A sub two or A2 is amount after, after two years. And A sub three or A3 is amount at the end of the third year. So here's the formula. After one year, and we know this already, A sub one is equal to P times one plus R. Uh, that is the same as before. But after one year, what's gonna happen is that 
this S sub one becomes a new principle. That's why it's called a compounding. So look at this, A sub two is equal to A sub one times one plus R. So one plus R is the same, but now for the second year, uh, the principle is now a, a sub one, not P. So similarly, for, for the third year, you're gonna have A sub three is equal to A sub two times one plus R. So here again, uh, the principle is A sub two not p so here's uh, what's gonna happen so we know that s of y is equal to one thousand ten dollars so s of two is now s of y is a new principle that's why i have one thousand ten at the front then i multiply one plus zero point zero one which is one thousand twenty dollars and ten cents similarly uh s of three is equal to now the principal is set, uh, $1,020.10 times 1 plus 0 point, uh, 0 point 0 0.01, which is $1,030.30. So uh, actually, I can simplify the process. And this is a formula for this case. So A sub 3 is equal to P times 1 plus R uh, to the power 3. So that's a formula. Uh, that's a formula that I mean later we're gonna we're gonna see more general formula. So uh, for any years t, we just replace three by t. So s of t is equal to p times one plus r to the power t. So uh, for the previous example, uh, your yeah, interest was compounded compounded once a year. Okay, but many times the interests are compounded, let's say quarterly, monthly, or daily. Okay, uh, so in that case, uh, we're going to modify the formula uh, that uh, a sub t is equal to p times one plus. Now, r was the annual interest rate, so r is divided by the number of compounding. So, uh, for the case of a quarterly, that means that uh, the year is divided into four equal parts. So n is equal to four. So for the quarterly, n is equal to four. And as for monthly, because there are 12 months in a year, so n is equal to 12. And for daily, obviously we, got, uh, we have 365 days a year. So n is equal to 365. Then, uh, the power here is n times t, uh, not, not simply t. Uh, so the, the annual case is actually a special case of this formula because previously we had n is equal to one. Then uh, we get uh, we get the uh, uh, previous formula. Let's look at this. Oh, here, see, uh, s of t is equal to p times one plus r to the power t. But now uh, we have n, which is different from one. That's why uh, we have this formula, n sub t is equal to p times one plus r over n to the power n t. Okay, so here's an example. So once again, uh, the original principle is $1,000. Interest rate is 1%. And the number of compounding is, let's say, quarterly, four times a year. We want to know the amount of money after 10 years. So we just use a formula like this. So the principle is the same, 1,000. The interest rate is the same, 0 0.01. Then we have to divide the interest rate by four because it's uh, compounded quarterly, four times a year. Then the power is four times 10. Then from the calculator, I got 1,100 five dollars and three cents. Now, uh, here's another example. Uh, now, uh, all the numbers are, are the same except n. Uh, this time n is equal to three, 365. So the interest is compounded daily. So I just change uh, n to 365 and 
um, if I calculate this 10 years later, I get $1,105.17. So, you know, uh, because interest is small, so there's not, there may not be a clear difference, but look at this. Uh, previously, I have three cents here. But this time I have 17 cents. So uh, as the number of compounding becomes larger, the future amount will be larger. That's a general observation. So uh, that's what I wanted to talk about today. And if you have any questions, uh, you're always welcome to contact your instructor. Uh, thank you for watching and have a great day.